Hi, I'm Robin. I'm a virtual business development consultant from the island of Bermuda. And this is the next in our continuing series of how to do business better virtually. Today, we're going to be talking about a piece of free open source software called Handbrake, which will enable you to compress videos without losing quality. And by doing this one simple step, it will make all of the videos that you produce play better, run smoother, and up your video game. I've been using Handbrake for years, and it's the reason that there's never any stuttering or lagging or timing out when you watch my videos, whether you're using a laptop or a tablet or a phone, or even if you have somewhat shaky Wi-Fi connection. So let's get to it. So Handbrake is an open source video transcoder. So what does that mean? Well, in very simplistic layman's terms, when you make a video embedded into the code uh, for putting it on YouTube or anywhere you want on the internet are the instructions that tell YouTube or whatever platform you're using how to play the video. But when you make the video, these instructions can be broken up into bits or anywhere within the code itself. Handbrake takes it and puts it all at the front of the video and that stops the video from stuttering or buffering or playing slowly or lagging once you're playing it. So it'll make everything that you do run smoother. The game changer is that it enables you to do this without paying extra money, without spending a lot of time, and without diminishing the quality of the end video that you actually produce. So the first thing you need to do is go to handbrake.fr. And when you arrive at the home page, you'll see I have it up here now, you'll see that there is a page for downloads. So it's pretty simplistic. You just go to the download and you download now. When you download the software and install it and you open it, you're going to arrive at a page that looks very much like this. And the first thing that we need to do is to upload a piece of video that we want to work on. So now you can see I have uploaded a piece of footage of some beekeepers that I shot recently here on the island. Now you're going to see that there is somewhat of a dizzying array of features available. So I'm going to give you a path to set up your video in the simplest way possible. And uh, once you are more familiar with the software, then of course you can go and play with the settings or watch uh, other YouTubers talking about how to optimize your output. So you have a summary page, you have dimensions, you have filters, you have video, you have audio, you have subtitles, and you have chapters. Now on the summary page, which is the one that the program will most likely open on, you will see that you can preview different scenes from the video to see how it looks. And there are some boxes here on the left side under format you're most likely going to want to choose mp4 output there are other options available but i would say if you're going to put this uh, up online mp4 is what you want and you want to make sure that the boxes for web optimized and the line av start are ticked that's very very important under the dimensions tab, what it's going to show you is what size is your video presently. Now, if you want it to play well on YouTube, then in particular, you want to make sure that your scaled size is 1920 by 1080. Your resolution, although there's lots of choices, 1080. P HD is a very good choice because you're going to get a high def definition, high quality output. And unless you want to start cropping the video, don't play with the other boxes on the screen. 
Now, if you want, if you didn't know how to do your own video editing and you wanted to crop the video here, then you would use these left, right, top, bottom options for changing the dimensions of the output. But for now, I recommend that you just leave those alone. I never play with the filters at all. Some other uh, video experts might recommend other settings, but for me, I just leave these things alone. And there's one other thing that's very important, video encoder. Now, used to be that all video encoders needed to be 264. You will read, if you are into techie stuff, that the world is in the process of moving to 265. If you choose 265, you will find that your video plays spectacularly on some platforms, but not at all on others. LinkedIn, uh, at the date and time that I'm recording this video in February 2022, doesn't actually accept videos with the 265 variable. So you're going to want to make sure that your video encoder is set to 264, at least for the time being. Now, there is another feature here called constant quality. And if you mouse over it, you'll see you get a whole pile of extra information. And there is a slider here you can play with. In my experience, setting it to 22 always gives good results. But you know, when you have time and as your experience and your confidence grows, you can feel free to play with some of these features. And then when you process the video, you can compare the results that you get. Okay, so back to the summary. Now that's pretty much it. Now all we need to do now is decide where to save our video. And for the time being, I'm just going to save it in my video captures area. So we have to give this a name, B sample final. And we have to choose a saving type. So obviously we want to save as an MP4. Now we're going to hit the save button. Now, don't do what I do and just hit start without double checking everything. I've learned the hard way that's not a great idea. Every once in a while, even though I've chosen MP4 as my save option, once I come back to the screen here, I'll notice that it is attempting to save as M4V, which is not what I want for this particular situation. So you can just highlight the M4V and change it to MP4. And then when you hit start, it will absolutely save it as an MP4. So let's hit start. And you'll see that even though we are inside a Zoom meeting at the moment where I'm recording this, that it really is doing the encoding very, very quickly. We're already 75% done. And it, uh, it's actually very, very quick. Now, if you had an hour long feature film, of course, it's going to take more than 45 seconds, but you will see that as opposed to some other options that take hours and hours of time, this really does happen quite quickly. Now, I know what some of you are wondering, this sounds great, Robin, but how do we know that the software actually does anything and how do we know that it will actually play better? Okay, so on the screen here, we have my before sample. And when we mouse over it, you can see that the file size is 52 and it's 42 seconds in length. Here's my after sample. And you can see now that the file size has decreased to 43 and the uh, length is still 42 seconds. But the real test is how does it play? So let's have a look. Well, I hope you found this little tutorial helpful. Keep watching for more tips and ideas regarding how to work better virtually. And until the next time, take care, everyone.